yeah it's working fine now uh, so let's pray and begin this morning's class heavenly father we thank you for this time that you have given us in your presence and father we thank you that you enlighten us by your word and father by the work of your holy spirit lord even as we meditate on the subject of prayer and intercession father we pray for a deeper understanding and lord we also ask god that we would be changed through our learning father god that we would be transformed lord in the people that we are and lord above all we pray that you will strengthen lord our relationship with you let it become stronger and god um father let us continue to praise you honor you and adore you even more we commit this entire session lord our father all the details of the session into your hands we ask for uh, your presence to go before us in jesus name we pray amen so um i trust that uh, you know you're all doing well everyone's doing well also the uh, online students who've connected uh, i hope that you're keeping well so this morning we will begin with our um, session on prayer and intercession i have already posted the notes for the online students so you can follow along we will do the introduction and chapter 1 for uh, the students over here you can follow along with the help of uh, what is being projected on the screen okay so we have also chosen to share the uh, screen for us so the online students can also see it okay so we'll begin with understanding what prayer really is um so what is prayer for you what uh, you know does prayer do for you that's the question so if you could just think through and uh, you know come up with your answers that would be very helpful what is prayer what does prayer help you do okay so we have an answer here uh, uh, where uh, prayer is conversation with god you know that is uh, what we've been told um how about the others and also the online students if you could post your opinion or your view about prayer in the chat section that would be very helpful okay prayer is conversation with god that's uh, what we've heard now what else what else is prayer or what is prayer to you it's a weapon okay so that is another understanding that prayer is a weapon so more any other insights yes please wonderful so prayer gives us confidence that god hears us any other insights or or views even the online students uh, please do post it on the chat so i can read it out to our class here what is prayer to you what does prayer mean to you wonderful so prayer is relationship with god okay. so uh, when we consider prayer prayer is all this and much more in god's word for us so we'll try and understand what prayer is and how it helps us relate with god so this morning um we'll go over the introduction to prayer and uh, why prayer why do we have to partner with god in prayer we'll also briefly look at the fact that though god is sovereign uh, there is a role that man's co-laboring with god in prayer you no know, means so that there is something important about us praying so we we'll look at that and then you now we'll uh, also look at what might happen if we don't pray so these are the key subjects that we are going to focus on this morning so in introducing prayer to us as some of you pointed out it is our communication with god it is our um, communion with god so when we consider any relationship in our lives which we are nurturing now obviously we will not try to cut off from the person 
if it's our family members, we want to maintain a good relationship with them. We relate well um, and we spend time. We uh, communicate things which are on our heart. We also hear them out. So the best way for us to uh, commune with people with whom we are nurturing a relationship is to communicate with them. So in the same way, prayer enables us to commune with God. It helps us to spend time with God. It helps us to express our heart with God. Okay? So it really helps us um, uh, in also understanding what is on God's heart. So all of these things are possible when we spend time in prayer. You would all agree that when we relate with somebody and uh, develop a really strong relationship, it's almost like uh, some parts of who they are rub off on us. Some parts of who we are rub off on them. Similarly, when we talk about our communion with God, we see in scripture that in prayer, God is able to give all of who he is to us. So in this way, we um, reveal our hearts to God. And at the same time, God reveals himself to us. And our relationship with God begins to get strengthened. Okay? And prayer uh, uh, is also a place of divine exchange as i just shared that we are able to pour out everything which is on our hearts before the lord and god is able to lay the things which are on his heart on our hearts so it's like a divine if you want to use the word like imparting so god is able to exchange and cause that exchange of of um, you know uh, his take away some of our old ways of, of perceiving things and impart to us from himself you know a new way of looking at uh, things around us so there is a divine exchange and there's so much more about this divine exchange you know that uh, uh, we are not covering right now but all these things happen when we spend time in prayer for uh, some of us prayer only ends up being it's on my timetable i need to check it off oh i've completed prayer that's it Prayer is so much more than just following through with the agenda or uh, it's more than a ritual. Okay, let's continue on. Prayer is also partnering with God. And we will talk more about this in just a moment. So we are here to work together with God. When we say partnering with God, it simply means that there is a teamwork going on. Okay, and in this case, it's God and human beings, God and mankind. There is a partnership which God intended and established, and we work with in line with that partnership, and we are able to see great things accomplished for the kingdom of God. So when I'm praying, I'm actually working with God, you know? or in other words, partnering with God. And what exactly? this partnering looks like we will come back to that so just a quick check on our uh, online students here uh, we have some responses uh, so surya says uh, prayer is talking with god krisha says intimacy with god and nina okay so she would uh, she's requesting me to keep the microphone close to me all right thank you nina i, I will i will um do that as much as possible. So thank you so much for all of your uh, views and opinions. Let's continue on and look at what are some of the other, um, you know, what else does prayer mean? Prayer is also ministry. Okay, ministry uh, is nothing but service. So prayer is our ministry. We are able to serve people through the prayers that we pray. This course will also include uh, information on intercession. So when we study about intercession, we will understand how to minister to other people through our prayers. Then prayer, as someone pointed out, is warfare. When we spend time in prayer, we are able to go before God, 
enforce whatever the Lord Jesus has um, uh, done on the cross for us, all the blessings, all of his authority, we're able to enforce that in and through our lives. We're able to see victory over Satan and you know all his um, works of destruction. So prayer is also warfare. So just with these insights about prayer, you know, I'm sure all of us will agree that prayer is very powerful and uh, it's much more than just following some religious ritual. And here is the beauty of the God that we serve. Uh, Psalm 65 and verse 2, it says, O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. So God has made a choice to hear our prayers. It's not a task for him. God is not a wearied and uh, you know really burdened to listen to people's prayers. Not at all. Because when we look at scripture, we see that God is interested in hearing what we have to say. And so when we spend time with God, as much as we enjoy God's presence, as much as we enjoy the fellowship of God, we see that God also reciprocates and he hears the prayers of all people and we are encouraged come before god and pour out your hearts and you know god is a god and especially when uh, we who have faith in the lord jesus christ as believers we pray his ears are turned towards us so first peter chapter 3 and verse 12 it says for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer but the face of the lord is against those who do evil you know, again an encouragement for us as believers whenever we pray we can picture this that god is happy to hear our prayers and for believers his ears are turned towards us in other words uh, it's inclined towards the direction from where the prayers are arising. So God is straining himself to actually listen to the prayers of the believers. This gives us a lot of confidence, isn't it? That this is how God responds to our prayers. And so we are encouraged. We don't go in with this thought that, oh, no, no, I have to pray. And then God doesn't come with the this attitude that oh no you know i have to listen and all there are so many people in the world and i have to sit and listen to everybody's prayers but that's not his attitude he is excited and very happy to hear our prayers and especially the prayers of believers if you happen to have any questions okay, even while i am sharing these insights just feel free uh, the on um the online students, you can just post your question in the chat section. I'm looking at your um, uh, chat to, to be able to answer them. And similarly, here on campus students, you can just raise your hands and we will um, address them. OK, let's continue. So here is the understanding of the purpose of prayer. Why prayer? I told us. We are going to look at that aspect today. So in the beginning, when God created man, God had a purpose for man in mind. God empowered man. God positioned man. God also vested on man authority. So God made sure that man here on the earth should be uh, in a place of rule and reign. So God wanted this. This was God's original intention. If we quickly look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, you know, we will um, uh, gain more understanding over there. So I want to request our um, on-campus students, if somebody can read it out, and in the meantime, uh, our online students could quickly you know, um, turn to these scriptures in your Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, wonderful. So we see that God created man in his own image. So his own image is his likeness. So he gave his likeness to man. And not only that, we also read that he gave man dominion. Okay, dominion is the capacity to rule and reign. Dominion is to have authority. So that is how God created man. And he wanted man and he created woman as well. But he wanted mankind to rule and reign on the earth. In other words, he gave them the stewardship of this earth and said, you take care of this earth. Okay? So that is God's original intention that man should carry authority, dominion, rule and reign in this world. But you know, we are aware of what happened because of sin. Now let's continue further. We look at um, another important scripture here, which is Psalm 115 and verse 16. So if someone can read that out, that would be nice. Wonderful. Thank you. So this scripture says the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. So this is reiterating what we just learned from Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27, that God has handed the earth for man's stewardship. So who is responsible? Who is responsible to take care of the earth? Man? Okay, quite obvious from what we have just seen. So man is responsible to take care of the earth. So I'm just looking at the chat here. Um, and uh, it says, it springs from the heart with a need for greater than man's ability to encounter. Okay, so uh, uh, Nina, I'm assuming you are talking about you know prayer and the nature of prayer. So I hope I'm correct about that. OK. All right. So we'll, we'll move forward. Uh, so we've looked at the fact that the earth has been given to mankind. Okay, Now, here is what happened you know, in this uh, purpose that God had for mankind. We are aware that once God created the world, uh, everything was beautiful, everything was perfect, till a time when sin crept in. And sin crept in through uh, an act of disobedience on the part of the first couple that God had positioned in the Garden of Eden. Now, up until then, I said the world was perfect. So they were able to exercise their dominion and authority, which we've been talking about so far, on the world or on the earth. But once sin crept in, there was a change in the dynamics of this authority. Okay? How, can we, uh, un how can we know that? Okay, if we look at Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. Okay, we don't, uh, I'm not going to ask you all to read it out, but this is the passage where the Lord Jesus uh, is being tempted. And at that time, it's interesting to note how Satan tells Jesus that if only you bow down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of this world. Okay, but that's why we ask the question how is it that Satan? is offering the kingdoms of the world to Jesus? Wasn't it God's original intention that the earth or the world should be under the dominion of man? So 
God had positioned man in a place of dominion and authority. But here is Satan saying, I will give you the kingdoms of this world. So obviously, there has been some change in the dynamics of the authority which was uh, uh, originally given to man. And now somehow it seems to have shifted into the hands of the devil. Right? So this has happened because of the fall or the corruption of the world through sin. So the authority which man was supposed to exercise Satan is now exercising upon the kingdoms of the world. And scriptures also talk about Satan as the God of this world with a small g. A God, our Lord God. He is the Lord of this world. But Satan is now ruling and reigning over the kingdoms of this world as the God of this world with a small g. So this is how we perceive you know, the change or the shift in the dynamics of dominion and authority. So what needed to be done you know, when, when this happened, when the uh, authority shifted? You know, obviously, uh, the God was gracious enough to plan our redemption, send his son Jesus Christ to die for us on the cross. And anyone who believes in him, you know, now we become the children of God. Right? John 1.12, we, we become the children of God. And not just that, we become a part of his kingdom. And so the authority which was originally taken away from us is now given back to us because of us being in Christ Jesus. Now, here is the second um, thing that I want us to see. So when God gave man dominion and authority, and also stewardship, he expected man to deal with the affairs of the world. In other words, there was a deputi deputization, or God had um, assigned man the responsibility of taking care of the world. So it's like giving a home to a tenant. When we give the home to a tenant, do we go back and keep checking? You know, have you mowed your lawn? You know, have you uh, swept your uh, foyer? Have you, have you mopped the floor? Have you put the curtains? We don't do that because the house now is under the care of the tenants. So this is just an example for us to understand that there people have been given the authority to over. Uh, that, that space. And so everything that takes place within that space is now their responsibility. And in the same way, we here on, on the earth, the mankind who've been made in the likeness of God, uh, we have been vested with God's authority and dominion. And it becomes our responsibility to take care of the affairs of the world. And I might as well add that you know you would find that god does not keep interrupting and intercepting the the way things are playing out here in the world okay uh, because this deputization is complete he has handed it over to man and he expects man to take responsibility so while god works and god is sovereign we'll talk about it a little later we also carry a responsibility to partner with God. Remember I said, I'll talk to you more about it. And I think now we understand better. Since we have been given the responsibility of the world, uh, we have to partner with God. There is something that we need to do in order for things to take place here on the earth. We can't just say that, God knows, he'll do it. Or God can, he'll do it. God wants, so he'll do it. Yes, God knows, God wants, God can. But there is a need for man to partner. And after the redemption, we as believers, 
we need to partner with God and his Holy Spirit to see the works of the kingdom accomplished. So this is how you know, we understand uh, the partnership that God intends for us. Okay, so at this point, any questions, any thoughts from all of us? Okay, seems like uh, it's quite clear. So I'll quickly move forward. Now that we have understood this aspect, when it comes to partnering with God in prayer, you know, how, how would it look? That's the question we're asking. So as we look at examples from scripture, we see that God declares his purpose. Okay? And we have to align with the purpose of God through our obedience, yes, but also through our prayers. God declares his will, God declares his purpose, and we as believers pray through. That is the way we partner together with God. So here in our notes, we have uh, the examples of uh, Elijah and Daniel from the Old Testament. So Elijah is a prophet. We know that he would receive communication from God. And there are two instances where we notice God spoke to him about the land and God spoke to him about the rains, that, hey, it's not going to rain. And then it is going to rain. So Elijah knew the intention of God. He knew the purpose of God. And this is there for us in 1 Kings chapter 17, 1 Kings chapter 18. And then again, you know, uh, this prayer of Elijah is talked about in James chapter 5. And you can look at the references in your notes. So when God's will is revealed to Elijah, what did Elijah do? Take a good nap. Or like, okay, now I know what God is going to do. Let me just relax. He will do it. He wants to send rain. This is 1 Kings 18. So it is going to rain. I will just go, sleep, wake up. And by the time I wake up, you know, it will all be, uh, everything will be drenched because God would have accomplished his purpose. And at least that is what we would expect from Elijah. But that's not what he did. We are aware that Elijah, when he heard that God was going to send rain, I'm talking about 1 Kings 18, you know, he informs the king about what is going to take place. That's very bold of him because he believed in what God spoke into his life. And God said, it's going to rain. He knew it is going to rain. So no going back on God's word. So boldly, he goes ahead and he informs the king. And the next thing he does is he goes up on a mountain and he prays, isn't it? So he takes time in prayer. And this is the unique, uh, unique thing that I want us to take notice of. Even after Elijah heard from God, even after Elijah was convinced that God is going to do this, Elijah chooses to pray. He goes ahead and he prays. Did it begin to rain immediately after Elijah started praying? No, it did not. We see that he had to pray seven times. So Elijah even persevered in prayer seven times. And only after that did he see a cloud as, you know, big as the fist of a man. So it was the beginning or the signs of the beginning of rain, which finally was you know, the, the confirmation he needed to swing into action. After persevering in prayer and seeing the cloud, that's when we are told that he got up, he began to run. He ran faster 
than the chariots because he wanted to escape the mighty rains which God was going to pour out that he had already promised. So this is a wonderful example of partnering with God. So seems like Elijah knew what we are talking about this morning or today. That though God reveals his purpose, it's not automatic that it will happen. God also wants us to partner together with him in prayer. Sometimes we ask questions. Why is it like this? You know, why uh, is the church still like this? Or why are these things not happening in the church? Why is the city not saved? You know, why isn't the word of God going out to the ends of the nation? We ask all these questions, but we must also understand while it is the will of God for his word to uh, save many souls and the church to be a glorious church, God is looking for us to partner in many ways. And now we're talking about partnering in prayer. So partnering in prayer plays a role. When we pray, God is able to bring into manifestation what he has already intended. Okay, So that is something we learn from the life of Elijah. We'll also look at the life of Daniel. So again, just want to pause a bit to check if everyone's OK, if the information is going in. Yeah, it seems like there's a question. Which one? Yeah, I'll, I'll go to that. I'll go to that, sure. OK, so uh, we'll go back to what we've been talking about, that uh, God declares his purpose, and we are supposed to pray it through. Uh, even Daniel is a wonderful example because God had revealed in, you know, God had revealed much early on through the prophecies of, you know, Jeremiah and all that, that Daniel and his people, they will be set free from their exile, that there will come a time when they would be uh, free to leave you know, Babylon. Daniel was aware of these truths, but the beautiful thing is he began to pray. When the time was approaching, he began to pray. He began to um, you know, partner together with God. He began to seek the Lord for the manifestation of God, what God had already declared. So uh, somehow, you know, I believe that even these people who were much before the cross, they seem to have the understanding that God wants us to partner together with him in prayer. So how much more you know, that we should have this understanding and also partner together with God? So uh, one of our students here, she wanted uh, uh, me to read out the quote, which is in the notes. This is John Wesley's quote, where he says, God does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer. Sounds uh, as if you know things are dependent on man. Let me read that again. God does nothing on the earth save in answer to believing prayer. So there is the need for believing prayer for God to do even his declared purposes. Even John Wesley understood this. Okay? And we've seen how. Uh, others in the Bible also walked with this revelation. So what I want us as believers to recognize is that we have a responsibility. You know, we have been called, scriptures tell us in Romans uh, chapter 8, 16 and 17, that we are now co-heirs okay, in Christ Jesus. Co-heirs means we have an inheritance, but we also have the position of authority and dominion. And God is expecting us, now that we are redeemed and we are in Christ Jesus, that we take our position to partner together with God in prayer. Yes, God has revealed his will about so many different things. What did he want the church to be? 
he wanted the church to be a very strong entity isn't it uh, we see in matthew 16 18 and 19 he said i give you the keys of the kingdom whatever you bind on earth will be uh, bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so he's already vested us with dominion and authority when we are vested with this kind of authority where uh, our words carry power and our prayers carry power god expects us to step in and do what we need to do and in this case we're talking about partnering together with god in prayer so the church has to arise in prayer as individuals we need to arise in prayer uh, yes there is the revealed will of god so many things have been spoken about the church you know how the church will rise up and how the church will be filled with the glory of god uh, how the uh, the power of god will be manifest uh, in the church how um, uh, that signs wonders and miracles will follow the preaching of god's word there are so many things revealed in god's word for us but you know we have a responsibility to pray it all through we have to rise up and do our part so we have to uh, be engaged you know in uh, what god has called us to do we may wonder that hey why can't god just do it all by himself but this is what he has chosen he has chosen to work together with man so the affairs of man you know, god will not uh, interfere right whatever we we need and whatever we need to know god has revealed that much uh, for us so when we get a hold of it we need to arise and do what god calls us to do pray and partner together with god the church uh, in being made joint heirs in uh, being vested with kingdom authority uh, you know it it needs to really rise up uh, and take up its position so uh, i'll move forward to the next section again about the self sufficiency of god and his dependence on prayers of man but any questions from you at this point since prayer is so common all believers we engage in it so we so far talked about what prayer means the purpose of prayer and how god wants us to partner together with him in prayer i hope the online students are doing okay okay wonderful so krisha says yes uh we'll move on then so let's touch upon this next subject here which is the self sufficiency of god what did john wesley say god does not do anything on the earth except in response to believing prayer oh that's a bold and a very uh, direct statement to make a very definite statement to make it it somewhere it uh, you know shakes up our understanding uh, of what prayer can do and also what god can do it sounds like the ability of god is being questioned but that's not the point the ability of god is not under question here is god all able yes he is that is the nature of god god is defined by his omnipotence you know that is one of the features of god which we cannot question he is omnipotent he has created the worlds uh, he he sustains the world no questions asked so god is that powerful okay i'll just pause as a question here yes please
you have to only say a word, right? Okay. So not a problem. I, yeah, go ahead, just read. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So we had one of our students here share about um, the understanding that the Roman centurion had about authority. You know, in Matthew chapter 8, when uh, his servant was sick, Jesus was willing to go to his house. But the centurion says, don't, you don't have to come. You just say a word because I, I know uh, when I give an instruction you know, to my soldiers, uh, they do it. If I say come, they come. If I say go, they go. So my words carry authority. And therefore, Jesus, you being the, the king of kings and the lord of lords of this universe, how much authority you carry, you just have to say a word and my servant will be healed. And we know, you know scriptures tell us, uh, in fact, scriptures tell us immediately in that very hour, the servant was made well. So that is the kind of authority you know, that we are talking about. And Jesus has given us that authority. Uh, so just coming back to what we were looking at, we said that we're not questioning the ability of God. Can God do? Is God all able? Answer is always yes. He can. So can God not stop? All the crimes that are taking place in our city, in our nation? Answer is, he can. No, can God not take away all the sicknesses right away? Answer is, yes. Okay, But we have to look at these things from the, um, from the perspective of the word of God. What does the word of God have to say? God is able, but he has... We then talk about he's already done what he needs to do. Uh, Romans 8.32, right? Uh, it's, I, I think it says, uh, he who gave his only son, will he not give us all things? Everything that we need for life, God, he who gave his only son, he will give us. Isn't it? So he has already done the work of redeeming us on the cross. Now, whose responsibility is it to enforce? It is our responsibility. God has done his part. And on the cross, what did Jesus say? It is finished. It is finished. And therefore, as a believer, I need to step in and say, OK, God, what is it that you want me to do? We just talked about us being co-heirs. With Jesus, we are co-heirs, carrying that authority and partnering with him. So what everything that he wants us to do, you know, fulfill the Great Commission. Okay, go into all the world. We'll do it. Pray. We'll do it. Right? Um, minister the power of God into people's lives and situations. We'll do it. So God is willing. God is all able. But the point here is, we have to do what we need to do. And that's where you know, God's dependence on the prayers of man come in. We also saw Elijah. Elijah prayed. But until Elijah prayed, nothing happened. No manifestation happened. Promises are there. There are so many promises in God's word. Will they not all come to pass automatically you see god is sovereign he sometimes even without us praying good things happen so even without us asking god releases miracles into our lives but here is 
the normal way in which god works god works through our faith god works through our prayers so we need to do what god wants us to do uh, and continue to seek after god there are a couple of scriptures here that i want to uh, read for us jeremiah 29 verse 12 then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and i will listen to you so god is inviting us and he's saying come on let's do this you pray i will listen to you and jeremiah 33:3 says call to me and i will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know so there is an invitation where god is saying let's partner let's pray and see great things take place i'll also talk a little bit about how jesus himself partnered with father god if there was one person who could be exempt from prayer or the practice of prayer it must be the son of god isn't it he has a good excuse to say oh, i am already the son of god i am already a part of the trinity i don't need to be praying and spending time in prayer however you notice that he used to pick a certain place he used to pick a certain time and there was so much prayer in his lifestyle so jesus constantly spent time with the father he partnered in prayer and then what happened after jesus prayed he um, went out to do the works of the father his life was marked by miracles right his teaching carried so much authority so jesus himself has given us this example of partnering together with god in prayer so if he has done it we don't have any excuse to not do it jesus encouraged the people to spend time in prayer in luke 18:1 i'll read this and then you know we can take a small break uh, luke 18:1 it says then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart so an encouragement again for us from the life of jesus but jesus says even if things are taking time don't worry continue to pray don't become discouraged don't lose heart you need to pray you need to persevere in prayer and that's when great things will start taking place okay in our lives so at this point let's um, uh, break and we will come back at um, 10 am 10 minutes break uh, the online students you don't have to uh, cut the call you could just go on mute and um, yeah your cameras are already uh, off so we'll just come back up uh, in 10 minutes see you soon thank you